This is the Night Force Action Report for Tuesday, September 3rd, 2013, from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. <laughs> Joining me tonight is a crew I have no chance in hell of controlling. Uh, starting with Aaron McNeil. <laughs> hey, guys. What's up? <laughs> do, you, do you cough often when you say guys? Uh, I'm trying to deal with the person laughing. Well, we don't want to talk to him yet. Ethan Moses, what's no. going on, man? Oh, hey, you know what? Nothing. Nothing G- at all. Great, great. Call ended because of server error. What the hell? We get to redo the intro. <laughs> we what get the hell to just happened? <laughs> Call... Did we all go down? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, we're keeping that in the show. Josh Lee, that was your fault. What's going on, man? Is his audio down? I'm mute. Oh, it's like a Google just blew up. It told me <laughs> the Google server. It's like the Google servers are down. It yeah. said, "Oh shit!" on my screen. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> and then I came back in. It was like, "Hey, your microphone's muted. Sorry, oh, bro." This and I'm is... like, "What? Oh my god!" But yeah, I'm good. Hey, things are great. How's awesome. it going? Thanks for having me. Love this show. A big fan. I'm um, really what, glad to be here. What's the name of the show, Josh? It's the horrible, uh, the other horrible show. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. <laughs> this, the return of the show. It's a top force uh, top force podcast. Yeah. <sighs> what have you what have you been doing since you were last on the, the top gaming best friends of Yeah. The checkpoint show? Um nothing really. Alright. You guys are a really great no. conversation. <laughs> Man <laughs> <laughs> That was for Ethan. I'm doing all kinds of all kinds of stuff. And not just working for once. Although I've been doing a lot yeah. of that, but somehow I crammed in fun. I was like working so much, I'm like, fuck sleep. I'm going to have a good time. Mm. So I did Gen Con, and then I did video games, and then I did some other stuff which is just not appropriate to talk about on this show, I think. And yeah, it's, it's been great. I'm so happy for you. Would yeah. you care to elaborate on any details worthy of a story that we might be able to connect to as an audience? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what do you mean? So, yeah, yeah, I've got one. I've been watching a lot of HGTV. Oh yeah, I think we've lost Aaron because he's been he's making he's so me really smiling. uncomfortable. No, 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 no. He does this. He does this. Fa- he makes that face a lot, and he just free. He holds it because he's so <laughs> fucking happy. He gets caught up in the moment. What, like, if, he needs, like, what if he needs our help though? What if he's actually frozen? <laughs> in place right now? You know what? what, no. If, what no. Can you can you think of a like a like a better uh, place to be than that? Honestly, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I don't know what order. Oh my god. Oh, there's two of you on the stream. You know, you should just restart the show. I don't even know what... I feel like it's all out of my hands now. You know what? Do, do over. We, no, Mulligan. no, we're not. This is no, this I is the professionalism. The Mulligan. This is the you professional... Keep at the top. This is the professionalism that the internet has been craving based on their comments. So they, they wanted us to be more... Uh, enthusiastic, right, Ethan? And I think we've got more that covered. More enthusiastic, yes. Uh, yeah. You know what, though... We can do that intro better. I think you should do it again. I don't know if that can be topped. You don't think so? I, no, now Aaron just looks sad compared to... Yeah. <laughs> compared to you Aaron, can you just do that face one more time? You're happy so face, happy, happy to be... <laughs> <laughs> let me let me try to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now Josh is down. We don't know. No, we won't know. We... All right, everybody. Just, <laughs> He's still there. Everybody just be completely right. still. That Google thing. Until chat freaks sends out. Sends a, a shockwave. Oh, Ethan ruined it. He rolled his eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't know if you guys were doing it still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to... <laughs> this will this will uh, translate really well to audio. Yes, be... yes. Uh, it's all yeah, bad. It's video bad. technical difficulty jokes are the funniest thing to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Aaron, before the internet kicks you off, I don't care about Josh's stories anymore. What have you been doing? I've been watching videos on the internet, which kicks me off. 
Uh, what, I got into you Netflix. You got caught. That's what happened. I got caught, Busted. yeah. Busted. Just catching up on Netflix. Nothing too exciting. Trying to catch up on Breaking Bad. I'm still behind, but I finished all the Netflix episodes. That show. That show is hard I hear, to watch. I hear yeah. a lot of good things about it. I really do. <laughs> it's, it's really good. People like talking about it around the water cooler. People. I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they water do. Water coolers. Holy shit, yeah. I've got water coolers at my at my job. This job I've got now. Well, you need to talk about Breaking Bad and Brian uh, Cranston. The other day, I stood next to it, and I someone j- came up and started to, like, bullshit with about, like, football <laughs> or something. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. We have to move this. Don't fucking start. Let me Go finish back. my water, and we're going to walk away, and you can say whatever you want, but don't. I don't do this. You understand that? And uh, <laughs> just punched him. Yeah, and the dude and the dude just kind of backed away. Like he's like, "This guy's fucking weird." And I'm like, "Listen, <laughs> you don't. If you don't get it, then you're just you're too dumb. Don't bring you, your shit to this cool. Don't even don't even get don't even talk to me. <laughs> if you can't hey. talk to me away from the water cooler, you don't get to talk to me at all. Hey, Josh. Hey, no, you're doing a real good job right now. Uh, we love it. We love it. <laughs> The water cooler um, interactions not working for us. What's going on? What can we do to help you <laughs> feel better at the water cooler? That's awesome. I just I actually just had a review today. Actually, you, they said that. Came yeah. up. <laughs> they that came up. They're like, yeah. They're like, wow, you seem to, you seem to like it's you're really weird. You, you spend a lot of time at the water cooler, but when other people approach, you seem to run away. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> And, You're like and, a gazelle at a watering hole. <laughs> I'm like, well, those cheap little, cheap little cone paper cups—they don't last very long. They just start to fucking drip through the bottom, and then what am I gonna do? I just so I get mad and I walk away. <laughs> you can get another cup, double up. Sorry, sorry to hear this. Bring your own double cup. Up. What? Two cup? It's hard enough to get one cup out. They're so <laughs> light. Like, and if your hands are dry and you try to pull, grab one, pull it out, and hold on to it, like you can't do it. I dropped like four in a row yesterday. <laughs> No, that was I'm surprised today. people even try to talk to you. Bring a mug. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> What'd you do with the other you six hours drink, of your day? You don't, you don't drink water out of a mug. Why what? not? Because my mug has coffee in it. I got free bring coffee. Bring two. It's How actually pretty mugs? delicious. Double it's, like ma- it's like a mountain blend. Mm. I don't know which mountain it's from, but I want to move coffee there mountain. and just mm. fucking chew on the mountain itself because it's made of mm. delicious cocoa beans. Oh, mm. Fuck my Argentina. <laughs> they have oh. delicious mountains. That's what that, I hear. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably yeah. yeah. Coffee talk. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Coffee cooler talk. Hmm. So Breaking Bad, Aaron, or wait, we were talking about Breaking Bad. Stuff. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I we were done. Yeah, we got <laughs> water coolers <laughs> or Breaking Bad. Stuff. He uses like, he mixes the water cooler with the uh, C four and um, takes down Matt. the Colombian cartel, and all uh, the coffee's free. Spoilers. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. I haven't That's even seen one episode yet. It's all done. That's the final episode. It's just coffee. <laughs> no meth. No more meth. <laughs> coffee and water. <laughs> this show went really downhill. It's a little. It's lost its edge. <laughs> we build this meth empire, but you know what we should really be doing? Let's get the coffee game. You know, you know what I like That's more than meth. At. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> oh. Oh man, that's oh, what. God. That's my game pitch. <laughs> Hang it's on. Mine. <laughs> All right, I'll give it. I'm gonna give it to no. Ethan. No, I'm writing, I'm writing it in. You got just. You got to hang out to the end of the show. To I got oh yeah, too. no, I don't. Yeah, okay. All right. So then I watched Dread. That's a good movie too. That movie's Ooh. awesome. Do we all agree? That movie's way too awesome. Yeah. It's mm. going to apartment buildings and or whatever complexes and just murdering people mm. with a helmet. Well, deserve it. Keep no, that helmet on. Keep that helmet on. Keep the helmet on. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say every time someone mentions Dread. <laughs> Justin always brings up the fact that Carl Urban kept the helmet on the entire time and just, how his jawline is so distinct. It really is. I want to <laughs> yeah. see just that a really casting call. Guy. Like they, I mean, the casting call was like done like reverse Wilson from Home Improvement. All the lines were recited like this. Yeah. That's how he got if, the if, role. If they were looking for a, a good jaw, why don't they go with Ron Perlman? That's like the, the That's best old jaw, jaw in the game. You know? Old you jaw. don't put him in oh, as yeah. the main character. Like no. that's not yeah. yeah. Hellboy was exception. Everything yeah. else like it's a, you it's don't. a character thing. Yeah. Uh, was Carl Urban in Beauty and the Doom Beast? Flavor in Beauty and the Beast. What? Wait, no. He was what in now? Doom, wasn't he? Was he yeah. in Doom? Carl he was Urban. Doom guy. He yeah. was the Doom guy. He was the Doom he was, guy. He was the first huh. person guy. Yeah. 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 Oh man. 
You know what we should do? We should add a first person scene to this movie. That part was so stupid. I, 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 oh, I gotta say, I kind of liked it. Uh-oh. My dad actually I, I goes, liked it. I my liked dad goes, it. yes. And I was like, well, you don't even know what your yes is. Really? Like, no, but I kind of <laughs> like that. Oh, like yeah. that oh man. Like, That's wait, great. No. Transcending <laughs> generations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just have the camera do everything. <laughs> I wonder why that didn't get a sequel. Oh, it should. Doomed it should. <laughs> the it second was game movie. was better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it, I mean it was yeah, it was dumb, but there were, it had all the elements I like in a dumb movie. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. O- obviously, Carl Urban and The Rock get, have been too busy to get back. Yeah. Their, their their schedules have not synced back up. That's true. Not That's at all. True. I want to see true. Doom Three, just where they hold flashlights but no guns. <laughs> yeah, I want it to be based off it's, the original. Authentic. It's very important to get those. Yeah, authentic. Right. <laughs> yeah. You can't hold both at the same time. Oh, Starring boy. Alan Wake. Oh boy. <laughs> Just Alan Wake. With first, hell demons. First person Alan Wake movie. Man. Yeah. He he wouldn't be prepared for Doom. Ron yeah. Perlman as Alan Wake. <laughs> but it's not a flashlight. It's a fleshlight, and it's actually Alan Wank. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's how, a long were, how long were you on chewing on that story. one? <laughs> no, no, that's hey, it on the right mic. That's right. It's fresh. <laughs> Where did it come from? Canada. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, my movie watching involved another rock movie. I was pleasantly surprised with uh, how entertaining Pain and Gain ended up being. Oh. God, <laughs> I was it looked so stupid. It, okay, but it, yes, but I was like, something about the trailers made me laugh to the point I wanted to see this movie. I wasn't gonna go see it in theaters, so when it became rentable on uh, on Amazon, I had to check it out. And somehow I talked Megan into watching it, and Whoa. and I was like, I'm just because she thought the trailer was funny because there's the one scene where. Mark Wahlberg is hugging the rock and telling him it's gonna it's gonna be okay. Like Rock's almost crying, and she thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, she really liked it too. It's it's hmm. it's it's a dumb dumb movie, but they you know it's about three bodybuilders that commit a bunch of crimes. It's kind of a dark comedy, but the bodybuilders are dumb and they. Man, they uh Which is a true story. Yeah. It's, it's like a... based on a true story. Yeah, is based it really? on a true story. Yes. Yeah. You can look like, it up. There's one point in the movie, like where it gets like at its dumbest point and it flashes on the screen. There's like two thirds of the way and it flashes <laughs> on the screen. Yep, this is still a true story. Like <laughs> and it was one of those because it was a it was actually a moment where I was thinking like, no uh, fucking yeah. way and then it pops on the screen, I'm like, What? <laughs> yeah. what? No one's this song. dumb. But I don't know. They got I th- beefed in that. Yeah. Holy shit, they were huge. They were ripped. Yeah. I think, dude, the ro- the Rock is so gigantic. But he's getting ready for Conan, isn't he? I mean, he's yeah. he's yeah. So and he's Hercules. Uh, he's right now on set of the new Hercules film. Oh wait, right Hercules, there. not Conan. I thought he would wait. They already oh, did Conan. Hercules. Yeah, the, they already did, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Same th- same thing. Same. No, thing. no, they haven't filmed that yet. They haven't done. But, but, is he in that? I yeah, think that's did. Vin Diesel. No, no, he's doing. What is he doing? You mean Jason Momoa? Yeah. No, they're act- the 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 co- the new Conan like the new uh, Conan. Co- Conan. <laughs> Conan Conan is is going to be Arnold and maybe the Rock, I think. You know what? Okay. Internet rumors, they change every what? day, so yeah. just check it tomorrow and it'll say some it'll say Jason Statham. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, he'd be a good I'd one. watch it. I would. Michael yeah. Chiklis as Tulsa. <laughs> Ooh, Michael Dudikoff. <laughs> Ooh, Michael Jackson. Yes, Michael. Yeah, Michael <laughs> Jan Vincent as Michael Jai White. Mako. Oh God, damn it! I was gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> there are only two people on the planet that are gonna. Oh man, uh, Ethan. When you could have been watching these amazing feature films, what were you doing? I was sick as fuck last week. The nerd flu got me. Like, I. I mean, I mean, anybody that watched the podcast, Karma last week knew I was sniffling. And oh my god, dude, it was bad. Yeah, I was really sick last week. Uh, so I wrote, I, I read a bunch of manga. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> That's a thing. Man. Is that your cure? <laughs> Why did you do that? They even um, have that in Germany. Uh, yeah. They well, it was on the internet. I was reading it on the internet, and I don't know. Uh, I don't know what got me into it. Okay. I was oh, I remember I was looking up creepy pictures, uh, and then I li- was li- listening to creepy recordings. 
mm-hmm. and then somebody mm-hmm. linked me to creepy comics, and then to creepy manga, and uh, it was a uh, Jingo Ito. Actually, looking uh, for. Oh man, Judge Ito. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. He's a good writer. He, it's he's shit scary. <laughs> <laughs> Big career change, like <laughs> Judge Ito went from, pretty much. You know, this whole yeah. O.J. Simpson trial really got you know under my skin. Uh, yeah. You know, manga. That's a thing. Wait, let me make sure <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm saying his name right. Ju. It's the only way that like he felt they could get Junji. Justice. Junji Ito. Uh, I'll put a link up there. But uh, yeah, man, holy shit, some fucked up, some fucked up manga. Now this isn't panty manga, okay? I know that's <laughs> oh. what everyone's thinking. Which is a specific all... genre. It's all panties. It's horror. Okay, so there's just fucked up shit. Yes, there's a couple nude butts. Okay, but in context. Nude okay, butts. Back. Okay. I'm back in. Okay, so um, yeah, that's what I was doing and just being miserable. I was pretty Keep miserable going. last week. I wasn't very happy. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Tell that's me really, about yeah, the panties. Really uh, you, you know, actually, the, the funny thing is, after that, I was like, "Oh, that's really cool. maybe thongs. maybe I've uh, judged uh, uh, manga all wrong." And then the very next comic I read, like the very first scene, was just like panty flap, like boom, right up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. boom, yeah. full page. Oh Come yeah, on. it was. It was. That's how we do. So this is so, all yeah. the. This is the cure for the nerd flu. Is manga? Uh, yeah, to get even deeper into the <laughs> the nerd uh, oh, uh, uh, way of life. Can you Absolutely, imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine what manga guy has to watch to be able to fix his nerd flu? Like how deep oh, he has shit. to go? I, I was kind of thinking about it because Aubrey did say, you're getting kind of deep, aren't you? I was like, yeah, I kind of am. You're deep. Um, <laughs> so I think maybe like collecting the action figures may be the next step. Or maybe it's Pokemon. I think Pokemon may be the next step. <laughs> just just do both. It's cyclical. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. Pokemon before yeah. manga is okay. It's cyclical. But it, it, you know, in terms of manga and then Pokemon, you're in trouble. So and chaos theory. Or teddy bear backpacks. Teddy bear backpacks. That's what it is. Full of Pokemon. Oh, Bad kitty yeah, backpacks. That's weird. Yeah. Yep. What? What's that? <laughs> no, I don't know. What is it? I don't know. What is that? No, no, no. You don't say something like that unless you know what you're talking about. Explain yourself. You know what I'm talking about. Explain yourself. Charles. Oh, I host a show. I don't have to. Charles Johnson knows what I'm talking about. Who the fuck is Charles Johnson? Charles Johnson. <laughs> I don't know a Charles Johnson. I know a Carl. It could be his cousin. <laughs> you really? Ooh. So I actually hung out with Josh uh, a few weeks ago. Correct? Me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we hung out. And uh, we haven't been able to. We haven't. JPT. Yeah, Jason. Jason was there. That was. He's a good sport. He had to. <laughs> he was hanging out. Wait, was I showed? I showed up way late again to Gen Con. So. But you and I haven't talked about our experiences. We went we went through some things. No, and no. Um, like uh, I don't know how how did I do? I talked about our my outbreak undead adventure, but um, how did how did I do from the outside? Like because I was it was a lot for me to take in on. that game or just the whole in day, general like the Gen I mean, Con. Yeah. I didn't have any fun. Uh, okay. We established that. Yeah, it's so. Uh, <laughs> first of all, you if you did have a good time, there's no way to know. In the moment, afterwards, you will say you will be honest, but I had like a good yes, time. that was fun or meh. But d- like all day, I kept a- I kept this asking Justin, like, I'm like you, why aren't you having a good time? What's wrong with you? And then he's going, no, I'm having a great time. But his face, <laughs> <That's> my voice, <laughs> was just, oh my god, like well, he- he's preparing to probably leave, or. Cut someone's skin off, Ooh. and make a sandwich out of it, <laughs> like, um, or he's shitting, like, and I couldn't tell the face, like it was could have been any of those things, and but he was having a good time, I guess, I don't know, but no, uh, it was fun, and we played a bunch of games, and my it was a, the weekend was much longer for me, so the times that you were there, and it, <laughs> Very and brief. the times that it was someone else instead of you, they all blend together, so. Uh, Playing the part of Justin uh, be, today, Gen Con. Well, don't, yeah, don't be surprised <laughs> if I if I just bring up like, oh, remember that time, and then you're like, that wasn't me, because it, it could be one. I of those remember X Wing and Batman and miniatures. Yeah. <laughs> art, Ghost Rider. Did you buy any? Did you buy any art? Yeah, no, I Ghost didn't Rider. buy. I didn't buy any art. I've man, you should have. I bought some cool. I've stuff. got I've got art issues. I've got a lot of stuff. 
that still needs to be framed and that I'm not buying anymore until I frame it. So. Yeah, but you never know when you're going to get like a new house with a room uh, that has plenty of wall space. <laughs> Check out know? this new house. You it just comes never with this know. room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, art room. Most houses come with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Art walls. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, but it seemed like you had. I mean, I. I enjoy everything. Was I just I love yeah, it? I it mean, was an amazing you, weekend. It was great, but I, I like seeing you, you guys like play some new games and stuff, and that was that's always fun. To me. <laughs> you know, so. um, those Tie Fighters, you f- you think they're a lot more mobile than they are. Like when they pop a U turn, you you'd think that they would actually like kind of do a looping maneuver, but no, they just kind of U turn in place, and um, I I don't know how to fly a Tie Fighter. That wasn't a U-turn, dude. That's like, what the it's a, that's what the the movement said. It said it was a U-turn. Th- okay, so you have on this. This is a tabletop game. One like you're playing like X Wings versus Tie Fighters, and when you pick what your your ship is going to do for that round, you pick on this little dial like which movement you're gonna do. But each little symbol matches up with an actual physical thing that shows you exactly where your ship is going to end up and where it's facing. And so you're like, I want to go really fast. I'm going to get the long stick, and that's going to take me really far. I want to make a little short turn. I'm going to get the short turn stick. Justin got the one that is medium size. It's straight, and at the end, you turn around and show your ass to the enemy. And he did it right in front of Luke Skywalker, and he's like, oh, no, I didn't know. Like, <laughs> then, did that in front of Luke? Why would you do that? Thing? I know that's what I said. I'm like, what are you he doing? He knows why. He knows why. And then it's <laughs> and then it like and it boned him. Like when you yeah. do that, it's it, it makes your guy. You can't do a barrel roll or anything, and he just is like taking it in the oh, right in the you know, sauce pipe. Yeah, <laughs> do a barrel Ooh. roll right Ooh. up the tube. <sighs> so that game but, was fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you you suck so at it so hard that you went and bought. The ships. Bought the ships. I got. I got the Millennium Falcon. I got Slave One. I'm ready to go. How much? How much yeah. crazy bullshit did you buy? I bought that. I bought the X, base X-wing set, two extra ships, which really wasn't all that much money. And then I bought Zombicide. Those are my. That was my. That's awesome. Yeah. My Gen Kong hangover purchases. Good. G- hey, good, good. Good purchases. I didn't spend that much. I didn't get actually that much stuff. I got like. I got the sequel to Level 7, which we've talked about on the show before last year, which is really cool. I can't wait to play it. And then, like, a War Machine card game. And I got a little card game. This is called Drinking Quest. Yeah. It looks kind of... It's like... Is it fun? I don't know. (laughs) I drank without... And then forgot to play the game. Uh, uh, So it's every game. It looks cool. Loneliness yeah. quest. <laughs> it, it, it looks like you're like playing like Munchkin or something, but all the cards make other people drink. So that's kind of what it looked like. And I was like, yeah, it sounds great. Get, um, get I don't know if you saw this, Josh. Well, I'm sure you did, but the, the War Machine uh, game got greenlit. Yeah. And kickstarted, and actually looks pretty badass. Yeah, that could be fun. Especially mm-hmm. like I like that they're going kind of towards the tabletop st- yeah. like style of play. It seems that's, like that's kind of looks like it, it's turn based, so it, it looks pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's a great game, and and the the tabletop game is so cool because, unlike most other miniature games, this it's just really fast. It's the whole game's built around like just charge. Take your most important guy that if he dies you lose the game, and just take him and just run him into the middle of shit. Yeah, but, you know, like that's kind of the way the game's built. Um, that's if the video game is anything like that, then you know, like quick little turn-based games of you know, just balls to the wall play. Mm-hmm. That sounds fun. Best place to put your balls. Where's I'm concerned. <laughs> well, yeah, there, especially right if there's a wall. hole in it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Just mount them. Uh, segue to video games. Okay, the new releases of the week. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Have any of you ever actually been on a segue? <laughs> um, no. Can I tell a story, though? Uh, since oh, I yes. asked him here in Germany, no. I have, I have <laughs> no. never seen anyone fall off a, se- a Segway. Since I've been in Germany, I've seen three different people fall <laughs> off Segways in, like, in glorious fashion. And I hate to laugh, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, if you would have just You deserve walked, it. Oh, you would be fine. And they, they just, boosh. I mean, when those things go down, dude, they fucking... This explode. <laughs> oh, oh, my shots <laughs> Michael Bay style explosion 
on those segways. <laughs> oh, God, I'm fine. Is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Are you okay, Phil? Phil? <laughs> Phil? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think the last time this group was together, that we... <laughs> There was a little bit of alcohol consumed, but I don't think that's fueling this madness right now. Unless you've gone overboard with the old fashions and I didn't know it, Josh. Actually, I had a double right before the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking now? a Diet Coke now. Oh, okay. There you go. Did you know that was that was uh, like a colloquialism uh, for a uh, a uh, d- uh, mm-hmm. hand-delivered uh, pleasure center? Male pleasure. Th- yeah, I don't know what... Yeah, I'm trying to be nice about it but oh you know, OJ, yeah uh, yeah handy i'm just saying i didn't know this and it got uh explained to me at a bar when i ordered one and a bunch of people laughed and i'm like this is like the oldest cocktail in the world like what's wrong with you and uh, they're like don't did know what s- that means did you say that you pretentious fuck this is the oldest cocktail in the world <laughs> yeah, I stop laughing How I, pushed dare up, you. I pushed up my glasses <laughs> he does the same thing when he talks about prostitutes so Everyone started laughing, and they're like, oh, 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 the whole bar, and they're like, hand job, hand job, and I, and I was just like, I think this is like a 1980s high school movie? Hand job, hand job. I would be so afraid if people I threw my that. drink in the ice bin on the other side of the bar, and I said, I, I was like, fuck this, I'm going to stop working on Fest 2, and then I walked out. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did tweet. <laughs> you pretentious fuck. New video game releases of the week. Oh yeah, that for this week. <laughs> Castle of Illusion. Mickey Mouse tries his Ducktales remastered impression. Uh, this one, I couple reviews I read today seemed uh, pretty positive. Actually, did any of you play the original? Seem okay. Yeah, I love the yeah, original. I played some of it. I, that... I read that Nintendo Power issue a lot. So it, I well, never okay. played it. I don't know. They always talk about the Genesis version. What? So it was on Super Nintendo too. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. I was caught right. Genesis. It was a cover. It was a cover game. Oh, okay. No, I was caught up in uh, Ducktales and Chippendales games at this point. So I never played. That Castle is what he's remade. Chip, Chippendales, Chip absolutely. Rangers. That's what we're saying. That yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah a lot, I, do that one. Aaron and I's last show, I believe, we were talking about making a Chippendales Rescue Rangers game and then a Chippendales Rescue Rangers game. Mm. Exactly. So, I played that. Turn the disc over. Mm. Oh. Shit. Magical <laughs> Quest. Damn it. I was wrong. It's a magical. The magical. Okay. Quest. So Castle Illusion was uh, might have been a Genesis exclusive. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. My bad. But I thought they were two different things. Shit was tight. Uh, they re- they redid it, kind of polygonal graphics, still a 2D platformer, but and they added like story and dialogue options. But apparently, you can skip all that stuff if you want to, which was probably the biggest issue that Ducktales had. It was that stuff was charming and nice, but I do want to keep playing the game. Hmm. Um, Ethan might be rethinking the fact that he has uh, put on record that he's going to play Outlast on Wednesday. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna live stream that. Yeah. But I will he, do it. I will do it. I'm not. Re- th- I'm rethinking it, but. I'm gonna do it, but yeah, I'm real. I'm real scared. Really scared. I've got Sitting it. You're alone. I'm scared. Yeah, I've got it. Um, I've got it queued up. If you fall through, but I'll be. I'll be curious because. Oh, I'm not going to because people. Are, I mean, I feel like people will give me shit. I, you know, I gotta be a hero. You know. But I. Um, I mean, go back and watch your cry of fear session and yeah but that was different i was going through i was having some hard times i was really having some bowel (laughs) issues i was having some bowel issues at that time so i don't know much about this game other than is this does this take place in asylum an asylum is that yeah it actually does it's kind of funny in lieu of the the news article i I put up today about an uh uh, anti mental illness themed um game jam uh this one yeah it's an asylum but there's like some like old world war ii secret um, uh, experiment that happened, and there's just some fucking crazy shit in this place. It, it looks, looks creepy as hell. It looks like it, Grave Encounters, the video game. Josh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, Ooh, that's yeah. why I'm pumped about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you like you love Grave Encounters, didn't you? <laughs> hell yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> oh, that was. Yeah, so no, it's gonna be cool. Join us. Come join. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier for me. The cry of fear thing. I also played it in the morning. Nobody was in the chat, and so <laughs> I was a little bit creeped out. You know, I was like, oh <laughs> shit. 
You were so alo- like you thought maybe something had happened to the internet, and you really truly were alone. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, if you do need some happiness after Outlast, I believe um, you can come talk to Aaron or myself about Rayman Legends this week because mm. yes. super pumped for that. Um, also, bonus that this game also has daily challenges. So oh shit. Uh, but I, I, I don't think that the deaths are going to be as entertaining as Spelunky, so I probably will not do a no. video series on those. But <laughs> the daily challenges, holy shit, dude! You've you've made your way in the world in terms of. <laughs> You're really- I'm, st- I'm, I'm still not any better at the game though. <laughs> and so, yeah. actually, uh, last night last night I did okay, but we'll yeah. talk about that later. It's um, kind of a kind of a difficult game. It's it mm. is it's trick it's tricky. Yeah, it's it's a tricky game. It's a game uh, about constraint. It's a game about what? Constraint. Constraint. Oh. The walls are... Restraint. Oh. <laughs> Restra- yeah, that's it. Was the that the pro- one I want? Prostraint. Uh, Total War Rome 2. Anybody? Nope. Okay. It's a big deal for some people. Uh, I want to, I wanna, like, watch some videos of battle scenes of that game. Of that game. As okay. far as, yeah. As okay. far as I want to go. Get a little fashioned, like, start a fire. Yeah. 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 Sounds real good. Mm-hmm. Let me in on that. Write a segue. Uh, Write a segue too, yeah. <laughs> toss a Caesar salad. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I swear this is a coincidence, but Diablo 3's console releases this week. Yeah. That actually looks fun. I, I think commercial's really funny, actually. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's because Twitch shoves it down my throat, but um, and that's funny to me. But oh. um, Free Fall Racers is the XBLA release of the week. Don't know anything about that one. Um, I'm excited. I this game's getting in my in the way of my Rayman time. But um, Brothers of Tale Two Sons is out on PC this week. So and mm. also PS3. So um, yeah, that sounds good. And man, so many people are like, maybe I maybe. You, Maybe I like tune in for it, but so many people have said like best game they've played of the year around this game. Really, it just it just baffles me. So I will. I think it's a, a lot of it's gonna have to do with the story, but uh, people people have had great things to be, say about it. Wow, better I heard it's better than us? Twins. Oh man, <laughs> nothing's better than Twins. <laughs> it's better than Junior. Oh, you know what? Both you bite your tongues at this point, or I'll bite them for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know about Kickbeat, but apparently, Josh, you're saying it's a Zen Studios game. What is yep. it? Yep. Uh, they make a great pinball game. How could they not make a great rhythm game about uh, beating people up in a like a disco dance, dance floor? <laughs> okay. Oh shit, that's unexpected. <laughs> yeah. Someone, someone got a little bit literal with that Batman fighting engine. Sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's a rhythm game. Huh. But, and you kick people, and you you beat people people up to the beat. Like I don't know. So, so I don't know. Like they got their they got they got their pinball physics down. They've got so they're doing this rhythm fighting game, and then coming off of Castle Storm, which was right. like an amalgamation cool. of tower defense strategy. I feel like. I feel like they're trying to like build up some ultimate like just, just dabble in everything, and they're gonna make some like big unifying game or something. I don't know. Probably not. Pinball kicks. <laughs> Storm. Maybe they'll Pinball. start doing Pinball like, Kickstorm. outsourced, uh, like non-original IP stuff for a big. <laughs> <couple of people. laughs> EA over here. We want to work on Star Wars. We're doing the multiplayer <laughs> for the new Mass Effect game. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's always what I wanted Zen Studios to do. Like, this is what I wanted for them. <laughs> no, I, I don't, I'm glad they're doing. They get it's like based. Black Ops Make Three maps, money, man. They do their own shit. <laughs> Uh, I like Zen Studios, so like, o- Oculus Rift we pinball. Can't. That's all, that's really you are the pinball. Oh, you're shit. just in, you could, if you could just look around. What if they did a whole arcade and you could walk around it in full 3D VR and you could walk up and play pinball and you, you could do all that. You know, oh my god! You know there is Ooh. someone within Microsoft that was trying to revive Game Room with Kinect. Game Room is Game Room. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Attach huh. your flashlight, reenact <laughs> your first hand job. Dude, I'm so fashion. Jot these down. I gotta buy the X Men game. Augmented reality. You look down at someone else's hand. 
<laughs> and then you and then you take your uh, your your goggles off, and John Carmack runs into the closet. <laughs> Mom, Carmack will come out of the closet. <laughs> John then, Carmack is here again. He and, it, and, he, and he closes the closet door, and you hear like a rocket lift off, and you open it, and it, he's there's a hole in the roof, and there's just square marks. <laughs> Sorry, what the fuck has happened? Damn it! Not the... again, Carmack. Oh, I want Doom Four. Carmack. Carmack. You Carmack. Obsession with realism is getting out of control. <laughs> He's got mega textures all over his hand. Like it looks so real. <laughs> <laughs> Towel off, buddy. Oh boy. <laughs> David Cage would be jealous. Oh, yeah. All right, we got in. <laughs> we got into this a little bit, but um. Josh, I'm going to start with you. You had a hatred for Spelunky. And then uh, and then you played it on a really, really sexy screen. And what yeah, has happened to your Spelunky's experience on the Vita? I'll say this. I don't know what it is about the Vita version, but I feel like I've got more control. Uh, my only other experience is playing with a 360 controller. And... <laughs> It's not that the D-pad is that much better on the Vita. It's decent, but... Um, D- so you D-pad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. heck yeah. I analog stick this. That's no, Aaron? That's not smart. I use the analog stick, but I mean, we're 360 controllers, so... I do, yeah. too. I'd probably D-pad on a Vita. Like, I mean, the, the Vita's got a good D-pad. Better. Vita's got a good D-pad. Right. It, it's well. I've been playing Symphony of the Night with it and getting really good with the D pad. Like I can always pull off my spells and all that stuff. It's it's actually really so. It's not necessarily as comfortable as I would like, but it's definitely precise. I always have good control. So Spelunky is all about having perfect. You know, you need to have the best control possible. Mm-hmm. And I think it's gr- a great version. It looks good. It seems to just like it's just so smooth and tight. Like it's a good experience. I still hate the game. <laughs> but I'm playing it. But it doesn't stop me from playing it. What an endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And we, we're all continuing to play it. Uh, give me some some recent lessons you've learned from your Spelunky runs, Ethan. Um, well, you, you, I, I keep forgetting about those goddamn arrow traps and the fact that they can be well out of your sight and you always need to have like a rock or a vase, or a skull, or anything in your or hand. Or a damsel. You yeah. Just throw it. Or, well, not the damsel, because they get killed, man. They get, they've got. Oh, no, that's why you use the damsels. I didn't say mankini or pup. I said damsel. Okay. Okay. I was gonna. Say, I got. Man, I got spicy, didn't I? <laughs> I got my mankini yeah. getting thrown in the Some line beast? of fire. Yeah. I killed him with a bomb today, though. I felt really bad. About yeah. It. Yeah. No, those spike traps still keep getting me. Or the arrow traps. The ma- yeah, my uh, I ki- I killed pup several several times last week. Mm. Um. In creative ways, though, and then then his corpse just goes bouncing, and I don't know, because he doesn't look. He looks more dead to me when he's dizzy, when he has the little, little stars or birds or whatever's flying above his head when he's knocked out. Like he looks mm. more dead there than when those are gone, and he's just he just looks like he's sleeping. It, yeah, his he's eyes really, are open, but he's so really peaceful. dead, and it's terrible. Mm. Mm. And um, don't um, let the other dog hear you. <laughs> I uh. Last night, actually, last week was not not a good daily challenge week for me and Splunky. The bats were tearing me up. They were just, just I don't know, their their locations were just perfect to like bounce you back into spikes or bounce you back into traps. It was uh, it was pretty bad. But but last night I had my best run yet. Made it to level four for the first time. Learned a lot of things. Um, um, first of all, the, 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 is it the Matic? Is that what it's called? The, uh, the yeah, pickaxe? The, uh, pickaxe, yeah. We'll, we'll call it the Matic? Yeah. M- M- Matoc? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Matlock? The Matlock. <laughs> the Matlock. Um, I get really excited when I get the pickaxe. Um, and apparently haven't had it long enough to figure out that, uh, if you use it too much, it breaks. Yeah. That's sad. So I was, I, I, I got the pickaxe and basically just went to town on the level. And was having a grand old time, and then it broke. And then I tried to get rid of it in, in anger, and it bounced back and hit me and took away some. Stuff. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. So that's that's standard Splunky. But um, so I don't feel like I understand the end of this game at all. Aaron fucking beat the game during a daily challenge twice, two times in a row during this holiday weekend. I finished Spelunky. 
on my daily run. <laughs> Olmec defeated the whole game. And, wait, wait, yeah, okay. Uh, well, Olmec is it old? Because it's not Olmec, Ol right? Old it's Mac. Not... <laughs> it's old old Mac. Mac. Old Mac. There's an old Mac also. Old Mac Matlock. Isn't that a? Hang on. That's from something. That's what, Legends, Legends of the, of the Hidden Temple. Temple. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, that. But Old Mac is actually a real thing. Like what? Before He's a real bouncing yeah. statue head. Yeah. That's what somebody was telling me on the uh, chat. They said that's actually a real, uh, like an Aztec god or something like that. So. I don't believe it. Oh, look it up, man. Someone told me that. Well, no. someone told me on that in the chat, so they could be lying too. I was uh, waiting for the game to tie into Metal Gear with its old mech. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really impressed that you beat this, Aaron. But, like, I, I've lost all, like, I, I don't think I'll ever beat it. But then I saw like the secret shit and how you're actually like to yeah. really beat the game is yeah. so expl insane. Ex explain this. So wait, level four yeah. is the temple, and I'm assuming. Yes. Old, old Mac, old Mac is involved in this, but there's yeah. other stuff going on. Cause so there's a there's a fifth level. There's yeah. th spoilers you, for anybody who's listening. And uh, and you don't get to that level like naturally. No, no, no. You no, have to never. get every secret little piece. So in the so in the each in each <laughs> of the levels, there's like a secret. So like there's the the eye that you get in the in the cave levels. Uh, you got to find the black market. In the jungle levels, which gives you, uh, you have to buy, you have to have fifty thousand gold to buy this certain item. I think it's the Ankh. How, um, yeah. so how do you then, how do you know this? Is this uh, like do you guys look this up? I looked it up because okay. there was a an achievement that said uh, you beat it the hard way or whatever. I was like, okay. how the what the fuck does that mean? And I looked it up and I was like, are you using an analog are you stick? Kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not playing on Vita. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's insane. Like, I don't, I don't, it's not, I mean, you gotta That's dedicate crazy. some time to that. Yeah, it's nuts. But it's cool, too. Like, I like that kind of shit. Yeah, I like, it's, it's oh, really I cool. mean, between that and the fucking, the fucking aliens, I was like, what is, aliens? What is this, what is this game on? Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I got dive bombed by some aliens. I'll never make it that far. And, the, like, the ice level, yeah. Ice, ice woolly mammoths that shoot lasers, or, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> The game's intense, man. The ice level, I, if I'm on the ice level too long, I always lose. Like, the one time that I made it to the Aztec level or whatever, the temple level, the, the fourth level, yeah. is I just I ran through the ice level and just, like, got to the bottom. Because you spend too much time, you slip on the ice, aliens get you, things explode. I mean, that that's a fucking, that's a devastating level. That's a tough level. Aztec Are you talking about Saints oh, Row? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you never, is... How far did you get in it, Josh? Uh, I've never been to. I no. I saw stage, it's stage uh, two, jungle. I mean, of jungle. world one. <laughs> Just say one two. <laughs> I, I didn't get. I didn't get past the jungle two on the one. on the one Xbox dash. version. Like I. Yeah. So I've only been to the ice caves, uh, like four times maybe. So, and man, I I was. I don't know how I was surviving that run, Aaron. You were kind of witnessing it, but it was just I was I was pulling off some. I was in the zone. I was in I was in the spelunky zone, and then it all fell like apart the, as it as it climbing does. Climbing gloves or something. The climbing gloves were huge. I was just going off yeah. to the side the side of yeah. the level and scaling my way down. Scaling your way down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. That is the, those are the. I think that's the best item in my opinion. I think some of the other items kind of have some negative effects to them. I think that's definitely the best one. I'm hesitant. Yeah, I'm hesitant to buy items during the. During the daily challenge stuff. Oh, I never do. No, I've, I've yeah. changed that philosophy, and then I beat it twice. Really? Be uh, beat it yeah, twice oh, with two hundred k points. There's still a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matlock. <laughs> Matlock. Um, are you guys gonna keep keep playing? I mean, I I feel like I feel like I'm breaking through to that next level, of Splunky. Like I'm I'm getting into. There's still a lot of new stuff that I'm uncovering, but. Aaron, you've now beat the game twice in one week. Uh, Ethan, I don't know really know where your motivations are. And I just Josh shaking his head vigorous, vigorously. Yeah, it's just, well, I don't know. Maybe it's a it's a great poop game on the Vita. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unless I'll you take my this. laptop in the t the bathroom. No, <laughs> no shame. <laughs> you just need to buy a Vita, Aaron. So they make ThinkPads for. <laughs> They're on sale now. <laughs> Yeah, so, da so daily challenges are keeping you into it, Ethan. But that's pretty much that's about all at this point. Like I, I, I put a lot, I put a lot of time into it a couple weeks back. But I mean, there's a lot of other games. I like it's a really good game. I just yeah. daily challenges give me a little bit more motivation, and, and I play it differently when I do daily challenges. You know, I don't yeah. 
just, oh, yeah. you know, I try to get as much gold as possible. I haven't unlocked as as shit because all I do is the daily challenges. Yeah, yeah. But then again, I play Spelunky every day, so that's been, that's, uh, that's, that's been fun. I don't know. It's it's a good either. It works as a cool down game for me or a warm up game for me. No matter what I'm yeah. doing. So and yeah, um, the problem will be if I actually get good and have thirty minute sessions versus those ten minute sessions that I was pretty used to at first. It's like yeah. oh, I don't really survive that long, so it doesn't really not take well, all, too much time I, out of my day. I use it for warm up and cool down too. Like usually, if I'm about to make love, I'll be like, "Excuse me, real sorry." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because I actually like to play a couple of quick games before I get in a street fight. <laughs> <laughs> I just get really pumped up. Some guys got some beef, and that you know, that one little shove, and I'm like, hold up, I pull out my, my Vita out of my uh, cargo pants, and then I, I'm like, <laughs> and I just, just smash. Take that energy to the water cooler. I just yeah. smash. When you smash, I just smash. Quote that. Um, another. Kind of roguelike game that popped back up on a few of our playlists this week. Um, Josh, you were playing some Rogue Legacy. Yeah, yeah, man, that game's pretty good. It's solid. It's a. Uh, I I wasn't really excited about it at first because this is gonna sound weird, but you kind of always play like as the same dude. I know different stats is the whole point mm-hmm. of the game, but. You're always swinging that same sword, and it always is kind of, you know. But you're carrying it about, so heroically. Every, I, I, love well, actually, I love that run. I love that run. I thought I was like, that's gonna be old. That's gonna get old. Like I just wanted different weapons, a little variety to that. That's like the only part of the game that'd make it perfect to be like, well, shit, just it'd be like a great Castlevania game if it just had some <laughs> different maybe weapons or something to it. And uh, I get over that pretty quick because yeah. it's really fun to. Uh, you know, play those the characters with the different really weird flaws, and I love that. I love that the gigantism is the best. It's broken. <laughs> you just your sword swing is so huge, <laughs> and you can. Uh, that's you know, how I beat can't... the. That's how I beat the first boss. Was yeah. just yeah, because yeah. I didn't have to move. <laughs> yeah, that's no. that's the that's what I always aim for. If I've if I've got that as a choice, um, and uh, and yeah, like the mag- I've started kind of using the magic stuff. That's pretty good too. Like yeah. some of the spells yeah, you gotta are mix it up. Um, so Jason was streaming this the other day. Um, he's actually gonna start streaming on our channel here uh, starting this week, I believe. And he was playing in a way that I have never even considered playing. Like I have, I have yet to use the architect who locks down the castle uh, after mm-hmm. you've beat it once. I just randomly generate and just go try to get as much loot, yeah, die, start. Start fresh. But he was locking it down every time and, like, trying to, like, he'd cleared out the castle, cleared out the forest, and was making his way through the uh, the tower. And keep in mind, he's, like, a level 10 or 15 at this point, but still kind of grinding through it in a completely different way. And I was, it just kind of, I don't know, coming back to this and coming back to Spelunky and just trying to play it differently kind of extends the life of these games. Because, I, I mean, I think I'm level near level 60 in Rogue Legacy, and it really started to be kind of a grind. Like, I, lo- I like the grind, and they do a, you know, they give you lots of progression in it, uh, but I eventually tired of it to the point where I, I wasn't going back to it. Um, but watching him play it a little bit differently and just trying to have fun with it again, um, it, it, it came back in heavy rotation for my weekend. Uh, mm. Kind of surprised me. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah, it's coming to Vita as well. Yeah, I mean, Sony's there. getting all that <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> us too, us too. Like, I feel like, I feel like them and the Steam representatives are sitting in all the same indie developer meetings, just like you know, just you know, just come over here too. You know, mm-hmm. you're, yeah. you're you're already over there. Come on, come on over here. Like, and Microsoft doesn't even know those meetings are taking place. That's kind of how it. How it no, <laughs> I feel like Microsoft is sitting in the back real smug, like, oh, well, well, you, you need us a, more than we need you. Up a surface. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, do you think maybe you guys maybe know about no, Skype and no. Netflix and Hulu? You know about those? <laughs> it's just, it's just. Oh like, boy, I can't wait to get out of this meeting and go watch some television and like some sports. Sports, sports, <laughs> you know, some sports. sports. What do you guys some dead mouse? How about and you guys? Some, some dubstep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can't wait you for like that rapes? football to start. Call of Duty. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it looks like uh, 
everyone was playing Saints Row 4. Who who has finished it at this point? I did. Just him. <laughs> Nobody else, oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay. I thought you beat it, Aaron. My bad. I, th- I know you're close anyway. Oh, then. Close. All right. Yeah. Where are you, where are you at, Josh? How fo- how how involved are you? I'll let you. I don't I don't want to spoil things for you. Oh, say that. It, I didn't hear you guys. Yeah, you cut. Uh, there was cutting. Cutting outage. <laughs> oh. Um, Typing. I was just trying to figure out uh, where everybody was. Where where have you left off in Saints Row, Josh? Uh, I. Oh boy. Mm. Uh. I got to the part where I can have. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> about percentage, <laughs> what? Like, are you halfway or what are you like? Well, I don't know, like, fifteen, twenty percent. Okay. Okay. Like the all, like a lot of fun stuff has happened. <laughs> God damn that game! Are we really gonna like not worry about spoilers? At... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we're still what, what a week? Has it been a week? Week and a half? It's no, but I mean, it's been a so, week I mean, today, right? No, two weeks. Two it's weeks. just like everything like in that weeks. game. If I told you about the intro and how stupid it was, like the like just the prologue part, like with the the thing that goes up and then you're yeah. ripping off Penis. some stuff off a thing, yeah, yeah, and then a song plays, like yeah. you. I mean, that's kind of like a pretty amazing moment, and it's like five minutes into the game, so. Yeah. It, uh, I just yeah. There's too many things to spoil in that game that are just I mean, so it just blows your your mind when you first like just that first time you experience it. Uh, I just really don't want to say a lot, but it's fun. It? Yeah, the story's yeah. fun. Like everything else, like th- there's no reason to ever get in a car in the game, which is a shame because I love driving around like an idiot. But now you're just you're the dude from Prototype or the Hulk, you yeah. know? Like well, I'm actually my <laughs> guy's actually Hulk, Hulk Hogan, so I don't even use guns. <laughs> <laughs> I have not touched a gun. Really? Yeah, wow. unless it made yeah. me in a tutorial. I I just I go full speed power at someone slam. and I do power like wrestling moves. Nice. And my dude looks like Hulk Hogan and he sounds like Hulk Hogan and it's just like I'm playing a different game than anyone else would be. You know, and like so that's a uh, that that part of it is really fun. But the the story is the reason jo- to play that game. Yeah, 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 Jordan was asking like is the story that important in Saints Row that you're worried about spoiling it? Yeah, that this is the, why Saints Row Four exists. Like, yes. it is still just a sandbox, but at, at some level, it's just you're a superhero in a sandbox, and it's not going to have the longevity that Saints Row the Third had because we all no. spent so much time with Saints Row the Third. So it yeah. is about the story and the fact that this team, like, they can put together an entertaining story, and they're yeah. they're hitting all the beats, like because they broke every other aspect of the game. All yeah. of the gameplay is broken on purpose. Yeah. You're just completely overpowered. At no point should you experience a challenge if you're playing the game correctly. <laughs> you know, it's you should and, be like doing dumb shit. And it's like, not... even the insurance game, like the little insurance fraud <laughs> game, <laughs> is broken because you can just literally yeah. cartwheel speed into a bumper on a car, and you just go flying in the air, and you can do perpetual, like you just do a cartwheel for a million <laughs> points <laughs> through the sky. I mean, Pretty much. I, I only had to hit the dive into a car button once, and I got a gold medal on like the first one, <laughs> just because like I just kept tumbling from super tumble mode. It was just like the dumbest. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe this actually works. And it's it, not. It's actually fun. It's not that it's like a like the best cohesively written or just dramatic story. It's that the story hinges on like references and just like standout moments it's just you want to know what that next standout moment is not necessarily the connective tissue but just like i want to know what the next thing is so it's really hard to talk about the story without spoiling those moments moments because they're just so enjoyable uh when you when you get to go through them the first time tons of 90s pop culture references (laughs) (laughs) you say yeah like we were what we were saying if blood dragon took care of the 80s this is taking care of the 90s and the early aughts i mean it yeah it really is. I don't know what was cool about the 70s and if there's going to be a game that comes out like that, but I think we've got... I mean, for those of us who've been kind of, like, wanting to relive those moments, we've been pretty... We've been mm-hmm. honored to have such experiences. I just want to watch the Matrix movies all over again now because I didn't realize how much how much they were going to lean on some of that stuff. Like, mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, so this, this actually spawned off of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Um... It actually spawned off of Spawn. No, it um, the they were gonna John do some Leguizamo. DLC. They're gonna do some DLC Good for thing. the 
Saints Row the Third called Enter the Domin Domina Matrix Donna Matrix Donna like Matrix Donna Enter Donna Matrix <laughs> <It's> just, mm. <laughs> and they Ask basically um, use That's that as the basis of this game <laughs> the basis for the story of Saints Row Four and I I don't know even when they announced that they're going to do superhero stuff I didn't I didn't kind of make that that connection so that's been yeah. I don't know that's been a lot of fun and just oh just that has and I think Josh you you might have I might have seen you say say this um, online somewhere but just the freedom that you know that this whole thing exists in a simulation that yeah. um it's allowing me to play the game different I can be an asshole because these aren't people. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, much more so than uh, I, some other games that I feel more restricted and like, you know, I, I will randomly use yeah. telekinesis and pick a person up and throw them, throw them across the ocean. It's that's totally fine. Oh yeah, not that I really had hangups from doing that before, right. but it's but now there's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even in Saints Row Three, I will say like I usually play those games and I try to avoid as as much uh, mass carnage as possible. It's kind of tough to. And, like, it's not as fun, but this game, holy cow, like, when Aaron and I were playing, I was just throwing dudes into buildings, and I was trying to throw them up and then see if he could catch them on the other side of a building. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of ways to yeah. really just mangle people. Have you played it co-op yet, Josh? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I got yeah and it's it's fantastic. <laughs> it You really, I prefer it, mainly because mainly for getting clusters, like, and just, it's so fun to just to fly around the city. That, that... I really thought that would be like the least exciting part about the game. Like when I saw the superhero powers, like, oh great, now they've made getting around the city boring and pointless. And I was like, no, I no, like it's just... like a it's like a yeah. race every time when you're playing co-op. <laughs> did you're did like, you guys you play know. Crackdown and Crackdown Two? Yeah, I played Crackdown. I played yeah. Crackdown. Yeah, I, I was curious about going back to revisit Crackdown Two. <laughs> Got to seem broken now. <laughs> I, I, that's what I mean. Like I real, like I enjoyed it for what it was at the time, but I'm just curious. Like after playing this, I was like, oh, I'm feeling some some definite definite crackdown vibes. But I wonder if it would even like function. Like I mean, because this game had some jank to it, um, and I know Crackdown Two has got to ha be like oh. heavy, heavy layers of jank. Yeah, that was that's what held it back. I believe. Like yeah. you forgave Crackdown for having jank because it was ambitious and. There was nothing else like it, and it was fun to play. But I, I feel like since Infamous and now Saints Row Four, that that game's got to be almost unplayable at this point. Well, but and but Crackdown Two got a lot of shit because it was basically the same game, but just with yeah. additions to it. And people yeah. were pretty like that was what everyone said it was like this is the same game. Where Saints Row, we talked about it. They kind of, you know, they they they, they balance that line, you know, enough for for our satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Is it is that weird though? Like all like like the only reason I feel like I'm giving it slack is because I see the I almost feel like I see the business side of it. They they get it out before GTA. They have a shorter development cycle. The the publisher wants to make money off this franchise before the next generation hits. Like it's all a matter of like getting it in on this timeline. So I accept they have a shorter timeline. So I ex I accept less of the game in in the game than I normally would, and I feel. I don't know. I feel that's a little bit disingenuous for some reason. Like I, I feel like I'm not judging it harshly like I would other other games for that reason because it's so damn fun. Yeah, yeah, I see I, that. I, yeah, I mean, I, ha I, 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 do feel like I judge it a lot harsher than like I felt like I was pretty fair in kind of the thing. Like if I were to write a review on it, like I feel like I'd be pretty fair with it. Um, but you like your franchises, and you can't. I mean, it was more of what you like. And I thought about yeah. like when writing a review and, and saying, "Look, if I hadn't played Saints Row Three, would I have liked this more or less?" And you can't really say that because they're giving you more of what you liked, and they're just throwing everything at you. So I mean, uh, to me, like, I don't know. I think some people may have been looking. I think everybody wanted to say, "Oh, this isn't enough new stuff," and I think it was enough new stuff that even those people, you know, rethought that that take on it because that's what i said a few months ago i said this is just it's not going to be enough it's going to be an expansion pack it's it won't be enough to for the full it's a full price game and i i was i was pleasantly surprised i think it does it, it, it's on that line though it really really is on that line yeah yeah and, but I, I see i think this i think this was a perfect way to because you know these guys have to transition to the next generation on yeah. like their next big game, and hopefully they already yeah. have guys working on whatever that is, and I hope it's free space. That's free. true too. But, <laughs> uh, but th I think this is the best. Like this, the, those games have just been everything's escalated. Like they've just taken everything to an extreme. Like you're like, oh, how are they going to top this? How are they going to top this? I mean, the, Saints Row One was 
kind of serious. <laughs> like, I mean, it really for, was in comparison, especially. But you know, it was just like, uh, I mean, they were really taking on GTA back then, yeah. and and then two got. I mean, to me, I remember two thinking, like that was like a holy shit actual co-op GTA game. That's how I looked at it. It ran like crap on my computer. <laughs> I, I had a much better experience on the 360 with that game, but. Uh, and then three was just it was like wow this is they've done yeah. they've gone in their own direction and that was really cool but then it got so nuts so many like little things you would do in that game were just were just crazy and then so like where this is the end of that line they can't go any you know any higher with like the the crazy factor can't so they? not not coherently I don't think so <laughs> but do they need <laughs> I mean that's what I was kind of thinking about like do you re do you reset everything or do you Try to outdo it. You say, "Hey, fuck it, man. Let's see what the next step is." I don't I mean, know. What is you, the, you would have I to make like that was this different. game. See, okay. So the thing, the only thing I w- was thinking when I was playing this game that I thought, "Oh my!" Like where it could surprise. Like at some point, I went, "Okay, I'm now expecting crazy shit." Where they could have just completely just made it like the greatest game of all time is if you were actually playing like ten different games, like full gameplay systems <laughs> for like a flight sim and like a <laughs> an RPG and a whatever like that would to me that would be the the ultimate like crazy bullshit parody game you know if they're going to just like make fun of every video game and movie ever made like just go all in and just make completely different gameplay systems for each area that you're in i mean that i mean they they dabble in a lot of that stuff already and that yeah, would to me that would be the only way to take it you know any any further than what they've done but yeah, I, it's great. It's a great game. It, but it's not, you know, it's, um, you're in the same city. Like everything looks the same. You know, like it's not that, like they spend a lot of money on making new locales. But I started the, the thinking, story's great. I started thinking about Dead Island Riptide and the reception that that game got when the, uh, of it being <laughs> more of a, you know, a rushed expansion of a an existing game or just more of the same. And there wasn't any negative. There really isn't any negativity around Saints Row 4 and the only thing that stands out to me is like it it also came about that Dead Island Riptide was kind of made by their B team over there because the mm-hmm. A team is working mm-hmm. on Dying Light and I think they have another game uh, that which Hell looks Raid great. or whatever which looks and, great yeah and um but Saints Row 4 doesn't f- come across as a B team effort like it's still it 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 mm-hmm. has a very good sense of itself and that 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 type of polish or that sense of identity is something that I think elevates it as more of a standalone experience than just um, just an expansion. But I've just well, been really interested yeah. to f- at, at analyzing the reaction that this game's been getting. Yeah. Well, and they can afford to make mis- – I mean, they can afford to have little tiny quirks. Riptide couldn't because Dead Island originally came out and it had some issues. And yeah. that's still a hot and cold game. Everyone loves Saints Row 3. I mean, I, I, I rarely <laughs> talk to anybody that didn't like it. Not everyone loved Dead Island. I mean, I think it's a pretty even split between people that loved it and people that were pretty like, meh. Yeah. And so Riptide had to be way better, and it wasn't. Saints Row 3 could get away with it a little bit more. So, All right. Um, let's see. Let's move on to Aaron. Aaron, you got a, a game on your list a little bit newer that we haven't talked about. How's Splinter Cell doing? Blacklist is pretty good if you liked Conviction, and uh, if you like Chaos Theory even, I think you'll enjoy it. And I was not good at Chaos Theory. I don't think I've ever beaten a single mission in Chaos Theory, but I was also much younger back then. <laughs> uh, but inexperienced. I, I was inexperienced at sneaking, but after a while, yeah, I really liked Conviction, and Blacklist plays just like that, just Sam has the gadgets now. And the suit. That's I mean, he had the goggles and Conviction, but... He had to get uh, younger, younger voiced to get the gadgets. Yeah, his, vo- yeah, his voice kind of. <laughs> it's not Michael Ironside. Is that a good or a bad thing? Because I heard Ironside's efforts were uh, kind of waning in the last couple of games. It. I think he's all right. Sam is all right. He's he's gruff. He's kind of no nonsense. But um, it hasn't really bothered me. I've cared more about the sneaking and murder of guards out at, to murder me more than what Sam is saying, but he does talk sometimes during missions. He'll be like, stupid fuckers or something. He'll say like random things like, oh, they missed me. Like, I'm avoiding people. But uh, the character of Sam, 
to me, is all about wearing those goggles and shooting people in the head as they investigate something in the wrong place. <laughs> so, what keeps this game from being just generic third-person shooter at this point? Like, I feel like they've been... I don't know, they keep towing the line of st- being an action game versus being a stealth game, and I, I feel like being in the middle, middle of the ground has made me less interested in it. So, sell me on it somehow. They really uh, they really do try to satisfy the conviction crowd and that more stealthy crowd in this one, and I, and I don't know if it'll work for people that really, really want the like, full-on stealth since Sam can get out of predicaments through the action, but for someone like me, this is kind of one of my, I guess, I don't want to call it my dream stealth game, but after all the stealth games I've played recently, they kind of do allow you to get out of jams. Like, Dishonored lets you get out of it uh, pretty easily. You always have that plan B, and that's why I like Blacklist. You have a plan B, and that plan B is usually just shoot that guy. (laughs) But uh, it's very possible, and I've even made attempts to just ghost my way through a level, non-lethal takedowns, only if I have to, and I've been able to do it. So it's I feel a lot more capable than I did those years before trying to chaos theory, you know, my way to victory. And so it's a fun game for me. There's a lot of game to it. There's just a straightforward story, which has you doing a variety of things. But there are four people on this kind of mobile aerial plane that uh, has your mission hub. And you upgrade the plane and you upgrade your suit. And it's it's just kind of addictive for me just to get all the stuff and you earn money and you can just keep doing the same mission over and over again to earn money, which is kind of funny to me. That like the government it, just keeps paying me. And like, does it? There's like some sort of rating system when you finish the mission. Like, it judges you either on stealth, action, and I think there's a third category. But yeah, you get judged. You get kind of the incentive to master a level on either being a ghost, a panther, which is your stealthy, and you murder people. Ooh. Uh, ghost is stealthy, and you. How panther were you? Uh, I thought I would be more panther because I'm like <laughs> I want to stealth, but I want to also kill everyone. And I don't want to go full assault because I feel like that's not the way you typically want to play a Splinter Cell game, just to run into a room loud and murder everyone. But I tried that for the first time yesterday in a survival wave based match. And it was kind of fun. It got stupid hard real fast, but it was kind of fun just to shoot people with loud weapons. And I was still kind of stealthing around the area. Hmm. Uh, I would just, like, change my position, and they'd look somewhere for me. Like, he was loud over here. Where'd he go? And I started all over again. I still, so it, I still think it's I weird like it that Ubisoft just kind of pooped this game out, like, when they did. Like, for as big a deal that as, like, strange. I feel like every time they announce a new Splinter Cell, like, they they announce it with a lot of fervor and that, it seems like this is the return to form for Splinter Cell. Like, same thing with Conviction. I thought, the, like, this is the new direction for Splinter Cell. Cell. And it just, yeah. they just kind of, they come out with a whimper. Like, I, and I, I never understood if that's, like, like, and, and these games aren't bad by any means, but, uh, uh, I don't know, just f- completely fell off my radar and came out in a week with, you know, Saints Row 4, so. Are you uh, saying that, that, Ubisoft uh, isn't spending their marketing dollars wisely. <laughs> Saying I wish I would know more about their mighty mighty loot game or whatever that that thing is. Oh yeah, man. I, yeah, I'm curious about that too. That was, um, uh, yeah, the mighty loot. Did Ethan? Did you or Josh? You or Josh play any of the older Splinter Cell games? Because I never got into them. Mm-mm. Not really. No, I mean a little. Just five minutes of each one. Gotcha. I look yeah. at it. I, I remember looking at it, and I remember so you know playing Metal Gear Solid and and uh, Metal Gear Solid Two, um, and then seeing that I was like, oh, that's too serious. I kind of want a little bit of a little bit of silliness, you know, like in my stealth game. So that that kind of I don't know that that it, it maybe was too grounded in reality for me at that point. Like mm-hmm. I just I kind of like the fantastical settings and like Metal Gear Solid to me like had enough of that uh, without being you know obviously you know everybody having fox tails and shit um so yeah i don't know i just thought it was too almost too grounded in reality i think if michael ironsides had showed up in fmv form in those games i would have played him more (laughs) that would have been great i don't know i just i conviction and blacklist are just i couldn't be less interested in them but i also don't consider them bad games so yeah, I That's forget why weird. exactly I wanted Conviction. I probably looked at some <laughs> reviews and people thought it was good, and then they're like, 
it's a little more accessible maybe. And so I'm like, I'll give it a try. I think it was on sale, a collector's edition. So I bought it. And But yeah, Blacklist, I think it had the attention I felt at either E3 or some other yeah. game show before. And then when it cut, like weeks before it came out, it was just kind of, you know, Sam Fisher's going to be in a game this month, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I almost didn't buy it. And yeah. then some people liked it enough. And I'm like, I could trade in some stuff. I'll try it out. And I actually enjoy gotcha. it. So. Huh. Good job. <laughs> uh, Ethan, approval. Ethan, you have not been playing a game, but it makes games. Tell me about RPG Maker. Um, so yeah, I, I actually got RPG Maker uh, a few months back and was kind of toying around with it. And essentially, what it is for anybody that doesn't know, it's uh, it's a program, an engine, a very simple engine that allows you to make RPG games. Um, uh, it has its own tile sets. It has its own characters. Basically, everything is there for you. You just have to figure out the system um, and how to implement storyline or puzzles or fighting or whatnot. And um, it's 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 really cool because I've always really been interested in uh, making games. Um, I did you know a little bit of Flash back in the day, long long time ago. Uh, kind of lost. Um, Kind of lost my my ability to do that, though I you know I work on it more and more now. And uh, to me, RPG Maker was kind of like a cool introduction to see if I wanted to maybe try um, something else. I also have another uh, program called Construct. It's on. It came out on. Steam. I have Constructs. Those are cool. You, do you? No, you, sorry. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> no. Okay. It's it's another game engine uh, or game creation tool. Um, uh, cause again, I, I really, I mean, I think that, um, I don't have those, those skill sets, but I'd like to make a game. I mean, I have, you know, I sit and I write and I draw little characters and I'm like, you know, it's, it's about time that I actually put the time and effort into being able to construct a game that I would want to play that I'd be interested in playing without having the, uh, investment in, you know, like going to school at this point and, and, you know, learning the, you know, the C plus and all the real intensive type stuff. So all um, game developers that use RPG maker, they're not very smart. Um, RPG maker. No, it's just, it's, it's a streamlined. Um, it's very streamlined. Now you can go in and you can do your own scripts and stuff like that, but I mean, it's a really good beginner tool. I, it, it, for, for people that are like, I think it's a really good, there's been some games that have come out on RPG maker mm. that have, that have made some waves. Uh, I believe uh, Corpse Party was made on our, uh, a version really? of RPG Maker back in the day. Um, but I think it's a good intro to basically deciding, one, if you can get the very basic concept of, of you know, triggering events and that kind of stuff in, a, in game design in and of itself. Um, and then also like, okay, so if you like that and you can deal with that, do you want to go on to coding? Because I think a lot of people say, oh, I want to make games, and then they get into the coding, the programming aspect of it, and it, it, it can be pretty intimidating, you know? Um, and so I think this is a kind of like a good way to get into that. I mean, it's by no means simple. Like, I've been mm. spending a lot of time on YouTube and looking at um, tutorials and that kind of stuff, but once you get it, it's way easier to implement certain things as opposed to going in and doing every, you know, again, every line of code yourself. Um, and I, I've I've really, really enjoyed it so far. It's actually been you, taking I mean, up most of my time this week. So yeah, I was gonna say, it sounds like you dumped a lot of time into it this week. Yeah, I put. I think I put about twenty hours into it over the weekend and and here. And so it's just. And, and the other aspect of it too is like you know the game I'm working on. It's more of an adventure game, and it's probably more story driven. And for those of us that are probably more concerned in terms of like the games that we want to make with like creating a cool story. Like it allows you to do that. Like it, you don't have to necessarily have the mechanics down uh, to a science. It's just like a different way. It's more like a an interactive novel almost. I mean, you can play around with that. And I mean, I kind of like this idea of uh, different types of media because I've struggled to sit and like write uh, an entire novel myself at this. You know, at this point, I'm just I don't have the focus. And with sure. this, it kind of allows me to do something that's not making a movie because again, like I'd, I'd love to make a movie, but there's no one around to make a movie with. And I'd love to write a story. I just don't have the focus. Uve Bowl. Well, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's working on he's Puzzle around. 2, man. <laughs> but I mean, it, Kickstarter. It, it, it's a cool... Oh, that's fucking ridiculous. That's <laughs> another thing for another day. But it, mm-hmm. it's like a cool half, halfway medium between those kind of things. And, it just, and it's an interesting community. And there's people that are making sprite sheets and that kind of stuff. And, I mean, again, it, it, I think it's a cool intro into awesome. stuff from there. So Yeah, I was going to actually ask... I mean... Sure, it's going to give you the the ba- the basics for like 
for, like you said, your your events and the programming side of that. But if it was really allowing you to, I know you're also really into the the, the storytelling aspect of it, and that's I, I, that's good to hear that it's kind of driving you to kind of put that stuff together because that would be yeah. that would be my hook too if I ever um, dove into that. But then this site would go to shit. So um, when that happens, it's either that or I got back into World of Warcraft. So yeah. Um, sure. Speaking no, I, of that, go ahead, Joe, Josh. Well, I think the the end game here is you get comfortable enough with the tool to use it in a game jam if it's allowed. That's my that's my question. Is can't you've actually been to some of these things? Could you use one of these tools? I'm. I'd be curious in a about game this jam. one because in most game jams you have to Strict create rules yourself. Game jams. You know, so I don't know if, if you. I think you could use the tool set perhaps, but I don't think they would. I mean, game jams aren't super strict by any stretch of imagination, unless you're trying to like win a contest. But get you get out of here out. with your RPG maker. But I mean, you know, it. I we're making games. Be, we're making games from scratch. <laughs> we're you know? jamming. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd be, I'd be curious how people felt about that. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't, you may be disqualified if there was some sort of prize, but... Dude, start your own. Do your own game jam. RPG uh, Maker Jam. jam. To, uh, you know what, you could bring, you could use, uh, Game Maker, mm. you could use Adventure Game Studio, yeah. whatever. Get you I some mean, of that Ethan jam. It'd be cool, get yeah. some, yeah, mm. Mm. spread that on toast. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that the name of the jam? Spread that on toast? <laughs> Spread that on toast. Yes. Put it on your buns. Mm, mm. <laughs> game <Well>. buns. Game. <laughs> um, I just want to do some quick hits here and get to one more game from Josh, but um, for some reason I was playing a ton of Puzzle Quest 2 on the iPad this weekend. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was actually doing fights like doing battles in between doing other things i was editing video and it just was i hadn't used it in that fashion like i've, I've tried to do like heavy doses of puzzle quest 2 in the past and it kind of fucks with my head if i match three for too long of an extended yeah. period of time like my brain starts calculating things in weird ways and noticing things matching where they shouldn't be and it's it, i go to a dark place but uh finally found a it healthy makes, dose yeah, yeah. of puzzle quest 2 that, that game's actually really well put together like as far as mm-hmm. the the structure of the story yeah. and that kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if that was related, but somehow um, I also ended up playing Diablo 3 this weekend um, because I saw the battle... Okay, actually, I determined I wanted to find out more about Hearthstone, Blizzard's new trading card game that's in beta. But in order to do that, I had to get fiddled with my Battle.net account, which I didn't have, never remember the password for because they make me change it six times every time I log in. And come to find out there's a Battle.net app now that keeps all the Blizzard games up to date. I was like, well, I need that. I mean, I don't play any of these games, but I have them all, so keep them up to date. And so I downloaded World of Warcraft and Diablo 3 and started playing Diablo 3 with the intent of um, starting a wizard at level 1. Just <laughs> going to just start this over. Really did not like his intro. He's an asshole. So I switched to the Barbarian. Um... And played played a couple hours uh, of the Barbarian and smashed a lot of faces, and wondered why I wasn't playing Torchlight uh, two, but uh, I played some Diablo. So, um, I actually just wanted to give a shout out to the Battle.net app so you guys know that that exists because that's a thing now. <laughs> oh, so uh, I played that over the weekend. Uh, finished it in one sitting. It's not the longest game in the world. Uh, Gone Home is a first person adventure game. Um. I went into this. I actually thought it was a horror game. That's all I knew. <laughs> and and I'll, I will say there are. I was creeped out like the whole time I played that game. But um, <laughs> but uh, tons of reviews online say this, so I don't feel bad saying it's not a horror game because it doesn't really claim to be that. But just people, you know, when you just look at it, what. There's a really funny trailer for the game that makes it look like a horror game that's of, like a fan made, and it's really hilarious. It, watch that after you finish it; <laughs> it makes it funnier. Um, <laughs> that game has you're either the best story <laughs> in a game like this year, or well, I mean, there's some good stories, but this is re- like really, really, really well done. 
Um, or you'll think it is the, just the dumbest, most pretentious thing you've ever played. <laughs> uh, now, we've had games like that before <laughs> that we all were kind of... I, I, I was, we're usually not divided on that kind of stuff. Um, but, like, do you remember when we all played Dear Esther and then we got together was, and talked about it and we are yeah. all just kind of like, meh. You know, we were all kind of meh on it, I, I believe. Was that correct? Yeah. I, I, like, I, I don't... I think I liked it. I think I I, I liked I liked positive. it. I just didn't know yeah, what to make but, of it. Right, right, and yeah. and it was yeah, and, and so part of it was just going in and going like, what what is this? And not that I I, I mean I thought there was some horror stuff maybe going to happen in this game, but I knew going in this was like a first person adventure game. I knew that this was not an action game. So a little more I don't know my expectations were a little tempered. I, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just like the perfect setting, but. I had that experience that, like half the reviewers out there had that they you know just loved the game to death. Um, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really really good, and I I actually got into the story. Like I actually cared about what was happening. I wanted to know what was like. What? There was a part of me that just wanted to. I wanted to know what was going on in this house. Why things like were the way they were, and I thought that stuff unfolded very well. I didn't necessarily. Like I had ideas of what happened, and then, I, but I was always kind of it kept me on my toes. And then by the end of it, I, I just like the feeling I had at the at, when the game was done was just like, just real nice. Yeah. Why it did just, I? I was just like, man, that was just. I just really, really liked that. Why do I want to not like this game? Like I want to not have to play it. I feel like I keep digging into it to find somebody to be like, "No, this game sucks. It's not worth. It's not really a game. It's not." But everybody says it's like everybody says it's great. Like there's no holding back. It's like, there's no, nah, you know, it's just another kind of dear Esther game. But no, it's it's this is amazing. Like and I, I, I yeah, guess I need to play it. It's just like the the Jeff Gersman let me down. He was supposed to be jaded to the point of not giving a <laughs> shit about experiences like this, and he said it was great. And yeah, and now Josh no, it said was... it was great. And I don't, I need to, I don't know any more <laughs> jaded assholes that tell me not to care about this game. Well, thank God, because we have been dealing with jaded assholes for like fucking <laughs> year and a half. Thank God, a game came out that people genuinely liked, and no one found Jordan a way to chat. fucking hate it. <laughs> there you go. You yeah, know what? Yeah, it's, yeah, well, he, it's fine. This uh, like I did. It's okay. I didn't make this game. I'm not offended I'll if you don't. If you think it. the game's dumb, great. But <sighs> if you, it's like if you can just is it, is just it a, relax and just enjoy a story as it unfolds right. and stuff. And you know, if if the idea of that what I just described sounds appealing to you, then go for it. Like absolutely play this game. If that just sounds boring and dumb and pretentious and stupid, like don't. Because it's not going to surprise you. It's not. It's not at all. It's like, but it's like, it's like a good indie film or something, you know. If, if um, you want to hate it, you will the, hate it. Yeah, but yeah, but is like it, the, the, sounds real nice. Is it a better thing than Dear Esther? Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I think so. All right. Because, I mean, it, because there's an actual story that that I, that I got into. Like Dear Esther's more like. What does that actually mean? There's like all these like just weird. I don't know. It, dear Dear Esther was just too far out there, and I'm not sure the people who wrote that game knew what they were writing when in the middle of when they were writing it. And I feel like this game had a clear narrative, and mm. the 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 art form there. And I don't mean it games art form, but like just like the the craft was was in how they made it unfold over an interactive you know, two hours or whatever. Like that was the part that was really okay. kind of cool. It's like, why am I, why am I actually giving a shit? Why am I looking so forward to finding another letter in a drawer or something like that? That kind of stuff was just real. I can't, like, I couldn't believe it. Like, Holy cow. I actually give a damn about this. And, and the, the voice acting from the main person who is talking in the game is, uh, is really, really well done. It's well written. You and play as the really family's well ferret, I think. Yeah, that. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you just okay. you just find I'll find give... places to hide hide uh, like snacks, <laughs> find crackers. Yeah, I'll you're g- just I'll like g- I got some I got some oyster crackers. Where can I hide these for later? Damn That's it. what ferrets do, right? I don't know. I've never owned. How, how long? How long of an experience? Couple hours. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Gone home. Okay. I'll get. Okay. I mean. Yep. Okay. 
I trust all of you people. Just you don't have to play every game ever made, Justin. <laughs> you can. You but they keep saying this one's great. Like it's yeah, not even like a. a they say that about you, a lot you, of stuff. You, you can pass on this one. It's it's pretty good, but it's, there's okay. none of that. It's like no, this is this is this is amazing. This, we have to help no, Justin like not universally. Games. <laughs> Dude, no, no, wait, hold up. I just take my recommendation. Play it. Don't play it because everybody says it's great. Play it because you just like a good story. I'd love. Uh, yeah. I guess I want to feel yeah. good. Yeah, don't expect like the. Well, he did game like pain and gain though, so he may not. Like... <laughs> <laughs> he may He's not gone be home based on a true story. <laughs> uh, Jordan's yeah. advised me to watch her YouTube walkthrough. <laughs> yeah, or, or that I guess. Chats had my back. They've been trying. I appreciate that. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to skip over what we're working on. Um, just check out Ethan's Outlast stream on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be silly. Yep. Uh, or the the fallout from that. Um, yeah. The game pitches. Um, lots of uh, notes from earlier. Um, anybody feeling particularly strong about one of their ideas and would like to kick us off? <laughs> yep. All right, all right. Phil Fish, what do you got? My game is called Slamnesia, <laughs> and I wrote in my notes, and I may change this a little bit, but I wrote in my notes that it's like Memento, but starring Hawk from Road Warriors. Um, I don't think there's like a lot the, of action the in this tag game. team wrestlers. Uh huh. Okay. Slamnesia. What do you think okay. it's about? It's a, just... <laughs> obviously how would how do you think you would contract Slamnesia? Obviously, a big slam. This um, is. <laughs> Is this all, like investigating concussions? Um, well, no, I mean, you got to find out why it happened. So okay. sort of, uh, I put a match three game. Obviously, that's just <laughs> only going to be the way you unlock things. Um, it's our, it's our version of the pipes um, unlocking hacking game. Uh, but I think it would be, I think actually, I would actually want Telltale to make this game. I think this would be perfect. Yeah, I think this would be perfect for their style of of non game. I, Just I a was great story and when I read something. Slamnesia, I was thinking it was going to be like Amnesia: The Dark Descent, right? And instead of you With being wrestlers. completely helplessing, you would have the ability to body slam anything that comes <laughs> path. Body, <laughs> body slam the dark. Hey man, we're gonna have mod tools. <laughs> Welcome to Slamnesia. Okay. I like that. Yeah, that's great. See, the, you know what? This is the whole code. point of this game pitches. It's like to <laughs> to spitball a little bit, whiteboard. You know, we're, we're gonna no, come up with some. No, I mean, that Ethan, you're onto something because Slamnesia is amnesia, but you're playing as Hawk from the Road <laughs> Warriors. So, just a, I would play a series of games that the only thing that changes that you, is that you're playing as a professional wrestler. So, like. Like amnesia, the game is actually just a figment of his imagination. Or no, no, you put is. put put the wrestler in in the game amnesia, <laughs> just... and the, the that that is the difference is that he can he can body slam the darkness. He's not that is, really terrified of it. That sounds fucking awesome. Just the <laughs> idea of body slamming the darkness to me is like At, because those games like it's just you don't like nothing good comes out of it. Like what I played of amnesia is like. It's always scary. It's always scary. If you just fucking just got jacked up and just slammed some dude through a brick wall and made your way to the next puzzle, or if you don't want to solve the puzzle, just fucking body slam the puzzle. <laughs> or, you, or, or you play the game as usual and you get the Road Warriors DLC, and sometimes you'll like come around a corner, you're being chased, but you'll see Hawk like waiting, waiting to be tagged in, and you can tag him in, and then he just takes the thing down. This is what you're oh. talking about, right, Josh? With a match three game. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm into it. Could we I'm get, telling could you, we get when Ethan's describing it, I picture the Macho Man. Honestly, I, you um, can substitute any rest. I mean, that's we could make the next Zynga with this. Like, I mean, why you, any oh, pro man, wrestler your, in any game? Microtransactions. Free, yeah. yeah <laughs> free to play. Yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. You would. You. You'll get. You'll be able to pick out of five wrestlers you don't really love. And then you'll have to like spend either five hundred dollars on a pack of wrestlers you like, or you'll have to earn it through this grinding. Which one? Marvel but heroes. The <laughs> best. Hey, that's a good game. Show your mouth. <laughs> the, so like every Monday night, the roster updates. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah. You know what I want? I just talk about this. I want a game where 
like I want there to be an intro and it's really tense and everyone's really scared and these horrible supernatural forces are taking over a town and then mm-hmm. I want a fucking busload of wrestlers to come in and just <laughs> solve shit. <laughs> Solve it? They're detectives? They don't, yeah, they, they, don't, don't. <laughs> they don't use any of their wrestling abilities. <laughs> they use their intellect. Yeah. They all have trench the coats, but they have to rip the sleeves off because trench coats are trench coats are <laughs> restricting. And they're all like investigating shit. Oh man. I, think I found some footprints going this way. Oh yeah. <laughs> but see the thing about it is it's like oh, Pikmin. Oh, what have that, I found over like, here? They all, they all form together, and so you use <laughs> big waves of wrestlers to do all kinds of different things. Like, could you just oh, imagine wow. this scary ass town with like thirty, like just fucking beefed up wrestlers trying to solve crimes? I would play the fuck out of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> me, yeah. Oh, me too. Oh man, I think I yeah, I like the idea of interjecting wrestlers into various situations and not using any of their wrestling abilities. <laughs> The bus would have monster truck tires. Is that okay? Yeah. And flames on the side of it. And that's the only way. The only way it could actually carry um, all that muscle <laughs> is to lift it up and put big tires. Torque. Boo boo. And just, need, I would, just more imagine, power. Do, do you remember Hulk Hogan, the Hulk Hogan commercial or, or, or cartoon from back in the day? Yeah. Um, and it had that awesome intro where he's, a, he's like, dun dun. Dun 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 dun. dun. And he's walking mm-hmm. through the street. And all these kids just come crowd out, yeah. like out of nowhere. He just the really heroic. Oh man, <laughs> that oh I could just think yeah. of just I mean, remember the intro to what Resident is? Evil? And it was real like you know, dun, 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 you know, a little typewriter in it, like mm-hmm. 1996. Victims were found, and then suddenly that screen just splits apart, and the bus just fucking rockets through, and then comes <laughs> to a squealing halt. And everyone piles out. We're here, and then da 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 da. I don't even have mean. anything to add. You're saying all the things that I want, <laughs> and this you've left nothing out. Oh man, we need there to are make no other pitches. <laughs> yeah, an entire game publishing company based on interjecting wrestlers into anything. <laughs> That has anything that has nothing to do with wrestling. I think I might change the complete storyline of my game. That I'm yeah. right now. <laughs> just scrap it. Yeah. Start it over. Uh, Aaron, it doesn't look like wrestlers are involved in your idea. Let's see where we can they go with this. Be. You can change sure. that. <laughs> you can always you do whatever you it. want. You could. Uh, so yeah, I liked how Josh has trouble talking to people at water coolers. So I thought we could just make an educational game that teaches you how to deal with. Water cooler conversations, and <laughs> that it, it could be on the Wii U, give that system something you know to I, people to latch onto. But I was gonna, I was thinking of the yoga trainers that they would just, you know, they have that low bit of animation, and you just hear them talking about how to deal with water coolers. But fuck it, wrestlers have them. <laughs> oh shit! Wait, wait. Let's all okay. We're all augmenting each other's ideas, right? So yeah. What if the game you played it when you were actually at the water cooler talking to actual real people? Augmented reality game. It's an ARG. You take your <laughs> iPhone and you hold it up in front of your face, and it the camera. You know how like you oh, know how the it make, ARG it shit works. Them... Yep, turns make... them into wrestlers in your <laughs> eyes. I was gonna say it just makes them more interesting people. Or yeah, like yeah, you, you they're talking to you. And you're like, oh god, what do I do? I'm freaking out. Don't know what to do. And you put up. Here comes the phone. Turn on the app. Boop. <laughs> WrestleVision. <laughs> Straight into WrestleVision. Oh shit! This, this is a remote control. Why, and why yes? Why yes? Triple H. I had a wonderful weekend. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Labor Day is great. <laughs> You're right, brother. <laughs> That's I, not, like, I like Triple the app. Triple H doesn't say brother. <laughs> no, the, the app would actually be, you just... He's a chaperone. You enter a list of people you'd rather talk to. It doesn't even have to be just wrestlers. Mm. It just be just, yeah. I do not want to talk to this person. Let's, let's make this so person... You can talk to yourself. Well, who would you rather talk to besides wrestlers? Um, let's the see. The voice in his GPS. Wesley Snipes. He's basically a wrestler. I mean, I mean <laughs> yeah. if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. He's a wrestler that can't. That tier, that tier of actors that may as well be wrestlers. I was gonna say, he definitely yeah. fits in. There. All he, the only difference is he he kicks things and he he evades taxes and and that's when that's Wesley Snipes. No, I'm sure a lot of wrestlers. It only supports wrestlers or actors that could or 
could or may be in any of the Expendables movies. Yeah, that's good. That's it. That's pretty much all the same people. (laughs) (laughs) I was actually thinking, Aaron, when you started, um, that the game is actually a conversation simulator that is actually controlled by Josh Lee. Like, how would Josh Lee handle this situation so it's more of a josh a josh <laughs> lee be, trainer yeah. like an arcade mode where you have to you, you're go- shooting for high scores daily challenges you're shooting for a daily challenge on how well can you make josh have a conversation at the water cooler well oh, that's the thing if you had made him have a conversation at the water cooler you fail the game because he wouldn't have so you have to make a little boy so there's water coolers strategically placed everywhere in the office and it's, space. Tra- and it's training but you're so you. thirsty you're super thirsty all the time but the cups and just keep have, breaking you down you in your hands. No, you talk about a survival game now. You gotta balance your thirst <laughs> yeah. with, your, with your interaction. It's like the it's Josh like the Lee's and... Office Survival Simulator, <laughs> starring hey. starring Triple H and the Steiner Brothers. No, I think one of them died. Step one: buy several wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Wear disguises so people won't talk to you. Like, who's that guy? He looks weird. And that's how you get the drink. <laughs> you but then your push, wig fails. You push, you push the A button. You go, excuse me, sir. I know what you're about to say. Save it. <laughs> save <laughs> it. What a terrible catchphrase. For I am not going to save foster it. a relationship with you. It's a real... The tutorial on this it's is a, insane. It, it's uh, called... It's the, So the game we call Quench Quest, colon, <laughs> oh shit, here comes a talker. <laughs> Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> you made eye contact. Oh, okay. cups falling apart. Oh boy. I they are it. Just the flimsiest, cheapest cups. <laughs> Those old cone cups. You can't set them down. Like, what is this? Like, I I can have I can eat a fucking Thanksgiving turkey at my desk, but I can't have a cup of water. <laughs> like it's the dumbest rule. Like what just give me real cups. I know the dispenser will take real cups. <laughs> Jesus. Give up your Christmas bonus. <laughs> Jolly Month Club. <laughs> okay. Alright guys, I think that's it for this episode of Night Force. I so, think we broke it. I think so. <laughs> I don't think it's we ever pieces. I don't think it ever got together. <laughs> From yeah. Uh, Chad, thanks for uh, uh, supporting this show. We'll make more of them because of that. <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned. Uh, Josh, Aaron, Ethan, thanks for jumping on tonight. Hey, thank you. Fun and time. And we'll catch... What the? Phil Fish? Phil Fish is here! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Josh Lee, where have you been? <laughs> oh, Night Force will catch fun. you next week. We'll see you. <laughs>